good evening all i welcome you all on the behalf of study iq english ias my name is pritish mathurkar a warm welcome to the second lecture of a very innovative series which is termed as geography through maps so from today onwards we will be continuing on a very pleasant journey we will be continuing the discussions from where we left yesterday and uh, from today onwards i will be introducing you to even more detailed analysis of the discipline called as geography and uh, yesterday whatever i have taught i will be quickly revising that and in additions we will be continuing from today onwards so our typical flow of lectures will be like this that whatever i will do in the previous day i will quickly revise in 5 to 10 minutes in this lecture and in the continuation of this we will introduce even more concepts which are related to the previous day lectures okay as i've already told you yesterday all that our coverage will be primarily related to 11th ncrts and gc leon per se so we'll focus on the foundations and the basic clarity of the discipline of geography so slowly 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 we will start introducing maps slowly slowly we will start introducing you to some of the advanced concepts but from only geography gs perspective okay so treat this lectures treat this curriculum as the foundation for your general studies wherein if you do this curriculum properly roughly 50 to 60% of your gs understanding will be taken care of and you can apply this knowledge for analyzing for remembering and for uh, what i can say memorizing the advanced level concepts of discipline of geography okay so i'm reiterating my name again my name is pritesh mathurkar okay i will be your primary faculty for geography discourse you can search me on telegram via channel called as geography by pritesh sir i'm also writing the name of the channel geography by pritesh sir you can just search this telegram channel and uh, wherein you can find all the relevant materials you can find all the relevant current affairs discussion with regards to geography or you can also do a global search on telegram via geography underscore pm and you can join this channel for your updates with regards to geography okay so geography basically is having more and more say in upsc prelims civil services examination prelims as well as mains per se increasingly number of questions are being asked from this discipline so it becomes very important for each and every one of you to target this discipline holistically okay and that is the premise of this endeavor which study iq has started with all of you and in this journey i will be your guide i will be your friend philosopher and through this lectures i wish that every one of you has the conceptual clarity of this discipline okay so before any further ado let us begin with the discussions let us start from where we left yesterday okay so yesterday i introduced you to the concept or the discipline of geography what is geography per se so geography is nothing but the study of or the description of earth geography the word geography was coined in the 6th century bc by a greek scholar called as aristophanes so geography if you divide this word you have two words you have geoid and you have grapheme okay so geoid is basically the shape of earth the shape of earth is not circular the shape of earth is somewhat spherical it is geoid geoid in the sense that it is bulging in the center and it is flattening at the poles per se okay so that is the definition of geography but the most accepted definition of geography came from the american school of geography wherein it is said that geography is nothing but the study of surface of earth as the home of man okay why because your interaction and my interaction with our outside environment is primarily related to the surface okay we don't interact with the outermost edges of atmosphere neither do we interact with the out in the most core of the earth your and my interaction with the earth is primarily related to the surface interactions so that is the true nature of geography and as you all know i introduced you to the three spheres you have lithosphere the land on which you and me are all sitting today you are listening to me i am delivering my lecture you have the atmosphere wherein we have gases like oxygen carbon dioxide nitrogen okay we will cover this gases eventually in our lectures 
so basically the biological processes of respiration and photosynthesis which are being made possible because of the envelope of gases that we have around the earth termed as the atmosphere and the third sphere hydrosphere okay roughly 75 percent of earth's surface is covered by water earth is a blue planet if you see it in the outer space so earth will appear as a pale blue dot to everyone okay earth being a planet it does not have a light source of its own whatever light is incident on earth from the sun that is reflected so hence we don't call our earth a star earth being a planet the earth densest planet of the solar system one of the four terrestrial planets of the solar system and the only planet to have water in all the three forms you have water as liquid solid and gas okay so after this we ventured into some of the higher level discussions with regards to the shape and tilt of the earth okay so the shape of the earth being geoid if i'm highlighting you the shape of the earth per se so the shape of earth is geoid like this okay so it is not circular it is bulging at the center it is bulging at the center and it is flattening at the poles per se okay and is the earth's axis straight is it perpendicular no the earth's axis is not straight rather it is inclined with its orbital plane and this inclination angle is not constant the inclination angle varies okay between 40000 years okay so right now the inclination is around 23 and half degrees or 23.4 degrees and this angle of inclination of the earth's axis it varies between ages okay so if i'm highlighting you the angle of inclination of earth so let's draw the diagram again <clears throat> So this is the shape of earth and uh, if i'm highlighting you the angle of earth's inclination like this okay so this is the axis of the earth this is the perpendicular axis of the earth's orbital plane so this angle is the angle of inclination okay and this angle of inclination is not constant okay it is not constant it varies okay it varies it varies between around 22.1 degree it varies between 22.1 degrees to around 24.5 degrees okay right now this angle of inclination is between 23.4 degrees to around 23.5 degrees okay so this is the angle of inclination so because of this tilt because of this actual tilt of the earth you have variations in the seasons you have variation in the insulation received so how that variations are there and how that insulations are there that i will be discussing and this variation is roughly between 0 to 40000 years okay so 40000 years the earth's axis tends to be slightly less inclined to more inclined okay right now the earth's axis is pointing to polaris polaris or the north star okay and it tends to vary between polaris and north star to star vega okay so these are the two stars wherein the earth's axis can point okay this is how you are having the jewel shape of earth which is bulging at the center and flattening at the poles and you have variations in the axis okay so now if i need to highlight the insulation received on earth per se how does it vary okay so let us consider our star of the solar system which is the sun okay sun is the primary source of energy on earth and sun is basically responsible for all the important atmospheric telecommunications and the energy transfer on earth per se so if i'm drawing the sun over here like this so let us consider the variations in the insulation received on earth with respect to the sun so for our sake of understanding as i told you all yesterday that for our sake of understanding we have divided the earth into parallels of longitude and parallels of latitude it was in the world meridian conference in the late 1880s that we decided that we will 
divide the earth into parallels of latitude ranging from 0 to 90 degree north and 0 to 90 degree south and parallels of longitude ranging from 0 to 90 degree west and 0 to 90 degree east okay so the 0 degree latitude being the equator and the 0 degree longitude being the prime meridian which passes to Greenwich near London so if I'm drawing the equator for everyone so let us assume the equator is like this okay I'm drawing the equator incline because that is how the actual tilt of earth is and now if I'm showcasing you the incident received from this sun okay so let's assume the equator like this incident received from the sun as we move from equator towards the poles okay as we move from equator towards the poles okay so this is zero degree equator this is 90 degree north okay so if you see this this angle is per is exactly this angle is exactly 90 degree and as we move towards the equator this angle becomes very slant and the distance let us assume this angle as a this angle as b this angle as c and this angle as d let us assume this distance to be capital a capital b capital c and capital d see if i highlight you the trend over here so angle a is more than angle b is more than angle c is more than angle d and the distance a is less than distance b is less than distance c is less than distance d so this means what as we travel from equator towards the poles the distance the sun's rays have to travel through the atmosphere increases and the angle also becomes slant so in general from equator towards the poles in general from equator towards the poles from equator towards the poles temperature will fall temperature will fall because of the actual tilt and because of the shape of the earth per se okay so this is what we discussed up till now yesterday so now i'm taking the discussions ahead now today i'll be discussing with you all how the orbit of earth affects the life on earth and why and how the orbit is responsible for variations in the seasons and how do seasons change from time to time and what are the time period of the seasons per se on earth okay so let us now take our discussion to higher level let us now focus on the orbit of earth around the sun okay so let us start with some of the very basic information that we know okay is the orbit of earth around the sun perfectly elliptical is the orbit around the sun perfectly elliptical perfectly elliptical is the orbit of earth around the sun perfectly circular perfectly circular the answer is both of them are wrong okay the orbit of earth around the sun is neither perfectly elliptical it is neither perfectly circular okay the orbit of earth around the sun is almost circular is almost circular is almost circular but but with but with slight but with slight eccentricity but with slight eccentricity what does this mean what does this mean <clears throat> okay but with slight eccentricity okay okay so if i am crudely explaining to you what does this mean that the orbit of earth is neither perfectly circular neither perfectly elliptical it is almost circular but with slight eccentricity it means that the orbit of earth is almost circular but the revolution of earth around the sun has got slightly elliptical characteristic and this elliptical characteristic tends to vary between 0 to 1 lakh years so in 100,000 years or in 1 lakh years the earth's orbit can become almost circular or it can become extremely eccentric or extremely elliptical so if i tend to showcase you with diagram 
the orbit of earth around the sun is somewhat like this so i'm showcasing the orbit of earth around the sun as it is of today and how it tends to vary over the ages so if i'm drawing the sun and the orbit of earth <clears throat> so imagine this is the sun like this okay and now i'm highlighting you the orbit of earth around the sun So this is the orbit of earth around the sun. This is our star sun. And the earth revolves around the sun in almost circular orbit, but with slightly eccentric nature. Okay, eccentric means the sun is at one of the foci of the eclipse and this eccentricity tends to vary. This orbit can be elliptical or this orbit can become circular. So this is the variation in the earth's orbit around the sun. As of today, the orbit of earth around the sun is in this format, wherein the earth is completing one orbit around the sun in approximately 365 days. So 365 days corresponds to one year on earth. Okay, one year on earth. And because of this slightly eccentric orbit, because of the earth's geoidal or spherical shape which is bulging at the center and it is flattening at the poles and because of the axial tilt we have different seasons and we have different variations in the seasons so now please focus on the board properly as i tend to explain you how do seasons vary and how do the different uh, important dates on earth vary so the first thing that i will be explaining to you all are the different important calendar dates in terms of geographical locations of earth with respect to the sun okay so if i'm drawing the earth per se for everyone so let us consider this as position number one I'm deliberately drawing the earth's position on a bigger scale so that you understand it properly. <clears throat> These are not perfect spheres, but for our sake of understanding, I'm highlighting the earth's position on a proper bigger scale. So let us assume that this is the axis of earth okay let us assume that this is the axis of earth per se so now you can see i'm marking this position as position a i'm marking this position as position b 
I am marking this position as position number C and I am marking this position as position number D. Okay. The Earth's axis is tilted. Okay. The Earth's orbit around the Sun is slightly circular. It is almost circular but with slightly eccentric nature. And you have this one orbit being completed in approximately 65 days. And the shape of the orbit can vary. It can be almost elliptical, it can almost be circular and this variation is roughly around in 1 lakh years. So in 1 lakh years, the orbit can become perfectly circular or it can become highly eccentric with sun being at one of the foci of the eclipse. Right now, the orbit of earth around the sun is in this shape. So now if I'm considering position number A and if this is the equator, if this is the equator so as you can all see the northern hemisphere is pointing the sun directly so the northern hemisphere is pointing the sun directly whereas the southern hemisphere is away from the sun the southern hemisphere is away from the sun so if i'm highlighting you position number a position number a so in position number a the northern hemisphere the northern hemisphere is pointing towards the sun is pointing towards the sun is pointing towards the sun okay that is what the northern hemisphere is getting maximum amount of sunlight maximum amount of sunlight maximum amount of sunlight whereas the southern hemisphere whereas the southern hemisphere is pointing away from the sun is pointing away from the sun and the southern hemisphere is not getting the incident light which is there as compared to the northern hemisphere so what does this mean basically so if you go to this position position number a so position on position number a the northern hemisphere will experience what the northern hemisphere will experience summers the northern hemisphere will experience summers and the southern hemisphere will experience winters the southern hemisphere will experience winters and this position position number a this is called as position number a this is called as summer solstice this is called as summer solstice okay summer solstice and this position is normally observed each year on 20 or 21st of june 20 or 21st of june so if i'm writing position number a position number a it is called as summer solstice and this position is normally on 20 or 21st of june per se where the northern hemisphere is directly pointing the sun so southern hemisphere being away from the sun it will experience winters whereas the northern hemisphere will experience summers okay so now let's come down to position b now if i am considering position b for everyone <clears throat> okay so this is position number b so if you see position number b now the northern hemisphere now the northern hemisphere is pointing away whereas the southern hemisphere is directly pointing the sun okay so the north is pointing away the north is pointing away whereas the southern hemisphere is directly pointing the sun is directly pointing the sun so this means what the global north will have winters whereas the global south will have summers whereas the global south will have summers and this normally happens or on 21st or 22nd of december 21st or 22nd of December 
and this is referred to as winter solstice this is referred to as winter solstice okay so if i'm highlighting you for all in the diagram the summer solstice and the winter solstice so position number b it is it normally happens on 20 first or 22nd of december and this is called as winter solstice winter solstice okay why because the northern hemisphere is pointing away and the southern hemisphere is pointing towards the sun so in the north we will have winters whereas in the south we will have summers now you must be wondering sir why we are considering this as winter solstice whereas summer is having whereas the global south is having summer solstice many of you must be wondering why these names are with regards to northern hemisphere only so if i tend to paint the picture in front of you of the earth per se so i'm just switching my view we will be just discussing a little bit of earth now so if i'm discussing the planet earth with each and every one of you okay so if i open up the planet earth okay if i open up the 3d representation of earth per se and if i tend to draw the equator on earth okay so <clears throat> so this is how the equator passes through earth okay this is how the equator passes through earth approximately okay i'm redrawing it so that you have a working understanding <clears throat> okay so if you see the north of the equator so this is the north of equator and this is the south of equator equator corresponds to zero degree latitude so if you see to the north you will see the continent of north america you will see majority of the continent of africa you will see a big chunk of not a big chunk but a significant chunk of south america you will see the complete europe you will see complete russia you will see central asia you will see the continent of india you will continent per se but not, not continent of india the subcontinent of india you will see southeast asia and you will also see some of the islands of the philippines at china japan group so majority of the world's landmass majority of the world's land surface is concentrated in the north hence majority of the acronyms of geography discipline they pertain to the global north Hence, we refer to it as northern summers and northern winters. The idea of winter and summer stances is based on this only. Why? Because majority of the landmass of Earth is in the northern hemisphere today. Mind you, this arrangement of continents was not the same as it was before. The arrangement of this landmass has taken place over a course of evolution of geological history. This is the present day orientation, and hence, this being the present day orientation, we refer to it as global north and global south on the basis of zero degree equator. And maximum landmass being concentrated in the global north. So, because of this, we refer to it as summer solstice and winter solstice in relation to only the northern hemisphere and not the southern hemisphere. So, I hope this is uh, appreciated. This is being appreciated by everyone. So, position number A, it is summer solstice position number b it is winter solstice okay now if you consider position c and position d okay position c and position d so you can see that position c and position d you can see that both halves of earth okay both halves both <coughs> Mm -hmm. 
ओके बोथ हाफ ऑफ अर्थ आर इक्वली एक्सपोज टू दी सन आर इक्वली आर इक्वली एक्सपोज आर इक्वली एक्सपोज इक्वली एक्सपोज इन द सेंस ऑफ वॉट दैट दी ग्लोबल नॉर्थ एज वेल एज द ग्लोबल साउथ वेर एज द ग्लोबल ईस्ट ग्लोबल वेस्ट ग्लोबल ईस्ट एंड ग्लोबल वेस्ट इट इज प्रॉपरली एक्सपोज टू द सन ऑन दीज टू पोजिशन एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दिस बिकॉज ऑफ दैट दी बोथ द हाफ ऑफ द अर्थ बी इक्वली एक्सपोज टू द सन so these two positions position number c and position number d they are called as equinoxes they are called as what they are called as equinoxes on the equinoxes you will have same length of day and night so 12 hours of day and 12 hours of night on sun okay so if i am painting you the picture of this position number c and position number d so position number c and position number d they are called as equinoxes they are called as equinoxes okay they are called as equinoxes position number c it is called as spring it is called as spring or vernal spring or vernal equinox whereas position number d it is called as autumnal monal equinox autumnal equinox okay so position number c it normally happens on around 28th of march it normally happens on 20th of march whereas position number d it normally happens on 23rd of september of each year 23rd of september of each year so these are some of the important dates of earth geographical dates or important calendar dates of the earth which you have to remember from civil services examination point of view and for understanding your life on earth per se okay so i'm quickly reiterating the important dates for every one of you okay so that you don't get confused and we can move to further discussions of these particular dates okay so the orbit of earth around the sun is almost circular but with slightly elliptical nature sun being at one of the foci and mind you this elliptical orbit around the sun is not perfectly elliptical or throughout its discourse it becomes perfectly circular slightly less circular even slightly less circular it becomes extremely elliptical then it again reverts back to perfectly circular and this change is approximately in 1 lakh years for our sake of understanding for your life span for my life span and those who will watch this videos you can consider this to be fixed throughout your life span okay none of us is going to live for more than 100 to 100 years we don't know this being an age of ai where ai takes us but for our sake of understanding we should consider the orbit like this okay so the position number a where in the northern hemisphere points the sun directly this called this is called as summer solstice position number a this is called as summer solstice okay it every day every year it will happen on 20 or 21st of june where in the northern hemisphere will point the sun position number b where in the northern hemisphere is pointing away from the sun and the southern hemisphere is pointing directly towards the sun this will be called as winter solstice okay this will normally take place on 21st or 22nd of december each year position number c 
it will be called as vernal equinox vernal equinox okay it will normally happen on 20th of march whereas position number d it will be called as autumnal equinox it will be called as autumnal equinox and it will normally happen on 23rd of september okay i guess everything is clear to you now the orbit of earth around the sun now let us move ahead with some of the other important discussions of this particular dates so let us now focus on summer solstice everyone okay <clears throat> so let us now focus on summer solstice everyone so some of the important tidbits of summer solstice for you all okay so summer solstice if i'm considering summer solstice summer solstice is regarded as number 1 the longest day the longest day in northern hemisphere the longest day in northern hemisphere the longest day in northern hemisphere okay because the northern hemisphere being directly pointing towards the sun okay and now because of the earth's axial tilt and because of the earth's spherical geoidal shape the poles of the earth the north pole of the earth will receive sunlight 24 hours a day the north pole of the sun will experience 24 hours a day the sun will not set on the north pole on the summer solstice hence the name summer solstice because you will have 24 hours daylight on the northern pole so the second important characteristic of summer solstice is that you will have 24 hours day 24 hours day or twilight zone 24 hours day or twilight zone beyond 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 a latitude called as called as arctic circle called as arctic circle beyond a latitude called as arctic circle and this arctic circle corresponds to 66 and half degrees north 66 and half degrees north so if i'm drawing on this diagram so this is called as arctic circle okay 66 and half degrees north wherein beyond this you will have 24 hours daylight in the southern hemisphere so if you go to countries like norway sweden denmark so there you will have almost 24 hours daylight on 21st of june okay hence the word summer solstice okay the third important characteristic of this date is that the position of sun with respect to the northern hemisphere or the 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 latitude on which the sun's rays fall directly perpendicular that latitude is around 23 and half degrees north now what do you mean by this please understand this very very carefully what do you mean by this where the sun's rays will fall perpendicularly okay so i'm drawing the shape of earth again so this is our earth this is our sun okay <clears throat> this is the axial tilt of earth this is our equator so if we consider the previous diagram this particular diagram so now you can see in this diagram that 
the sun's rays do tend to fall perpendicularly not only on the equator but on a line on a latitude like this okay so here also the sun's rays will start perpendicularly why because with respect to the earth the sun has migrated somewhat up I'm again reiterating with respect to the earth, the earth's position is over here, whereas the sun has slightly migrated towards the north. Mind you, the sun's position with the sun's position is fixed. Sun is not changing its position. Whose position is changing? Earth's position is changing. So if I'm seeing from this perspective, the sun has slightly migrated northwards. So this northward migration will also tend to push the sun's rays insulation received on earth and the latitude on which where the sun's rays will fall perpendicularly or the maximum latitude on which the sun's rays will fall perpendicularly will even increase from equator towards the north and on summer solstice or on 21st of june sun's rays will also fall perpendicularly on latitude which is given by 23 and half degrees north and this latitude is called as Tropic of Cancer. So if I'm drawing 23 and half degrees north for each and every one of you. So this will be the latitude wherein the sun's rays will also fall perpendicularly on 21st of June. So if I'm considering this latitude, if you see this. <clears throat> Consider this part, consider this part, okay, consider this, and finally consider this, okay. So, this is our tropic of cancer, which is denoted by 23 and half degrees north. This is our zero degree equator. So, as you can see in the diagram, the sun's rays are also falling perfectly perpendicular. The sun's rays are also falling perfectly perpendicular on Tropic of Cancer. And the Tropic of Cancer is denoted as by that latitude wherein the sun's declination angle, wherein the sun's rays fall perpendicularly on 21st of June. So what does the Tropic of Cancer mean for everyone? okay what does the tropic of cancer mean okay tropic of cancer mean the definition of tropic of cancer so tropic of cancer is that latitude tropic of cancer i'm reiterating tropic of cancer is that latitude wherein the sun's rays fall perpendicular wherein the sun's rays fall perpendicular to the maximum extent to the max extent to the max extent max extent in the sense that beyond this beyond this beyond this the sun's rays will become slant beyond this the sun's rays will become slant so see this angle and see this angle so the tropic of cancer will denote that latitude in the northern hemisphere wherein the sun's rays will fall perpendicularly to the max extent beyond that the sun's rays will never fall perpendicular on the earth and mind you when this will happen this will happen only on summer solstice this will only happen on summer solstice that is 21st of june each year and why this is so okay very good understanding because on 21st of june if you see the orbit of earth with regards to sun so this position the sun has slightly migrated northwards with respect to the earth okay because of this inclination of this orbit okay and the north hemisphere being pointing directly towards the sun per se okay so very crude understanding so the tropic of cancer will mark the furthermost extent wherein the sun's rays will fall perpendicularly above that on any of the latitude the sun's rays will fall at a inclined angle or at an acute angle or the sun's rays will become slant on the earth so in general the tropic of cancer will denote the maximum extent on which the sun's rays will fall perpendicularly so i hope this is comfortable uh, everyone is appreciating this and similar thing will happen in the 
southern hemisphere in the winter solstice so if i'm trying to paint you the southern hemisphere in the winter solstice or in the uh, in the position where the southern hemisphere is pointing towards the sun so now let us draw that diagram too so i'm <clears throat> So this is the geoidal shape of Earth. This is our sun over here. This is the Earth's axis. So if you see, I'm drawing this position of Earth now, position number B, okay. This was our position number A, the summer stalsis. Now I'm drawing position number B, the winter stalsis. So what is happening over here? So let us also draw the equator. So this is our zero degree equator. This is our tropic of cancer. Now, what is happening? The sun's rays are falling almost perpendicularly on the equator. Whereas now, the southern hemisphere now pointing directly towards the sun. So, the sun's rays will also fall perpendicularly on the southern hemisphere to a particular extent. So, as I told you, like likewise in the northern hemisphere, the tropic of Cancer will denote the maximum extent till which the sun's rays will fall perpendicularly. Similarly, the tropic of Capricorn will denote that latitude in the southern hemisphere wherein the sun's rays will fall perpendicularly. So if I'm showcasing you the tropic of Capricorn, so this is tropic of Capricorn. Okay, the tropic of Capricorn is denoted by 23 and half degrees south. Okay, and if I'm showcasing you the sun's rays, so this is the equator wherein the sun's rays are falling perpendicularly. Also on the Tropic of Capricorn, the sun's rays will fall perpendicularly. Beyond Tropic of Capricorn, the sun's rays will start falling at an inclined angle. Will start falling at an inclined angle. So. See, this is perpendicular, this is perpendicular, beyond this, the angle, my bad. <clears throat> this is perpendicular, this is perpendicular, this angle is now becoming plant per se. So, what will the Tropic of Capricorn denote? What will be the Tropic of Capri? Con denote the tropic of Capricorn will denote that latitude in the southern hemisphere where sun's rays will fall perpendicularly on winter solstice and beyond this and beyond this the sun's rays will start becoming slant beyond this the sun's rays will becoming slant okay so as we move away from the tropics towards the equator, the sun's rays will start becoming even more slant. So, in general, if I am showcasing you with regards to the orientation, so just see the southern hemisphere in this diagram. With regards to the northern hemisphere, the sun has migrated somewhere down in the southern hemisphere, whereas the northern hemisphere has slightly moved up. Mind you guys, these are very crude words, okay? In actuality, nothing is going down and up. This is all apparent migration. There is not actual migration. Why this is happening? Because of the eccentric nature of the Earth's orbit and the angle of Earth's orbital plane with respect to the Sun's orbital plane. So, imagine the Sun is over here, the Sun is over here, the Earth is over here. So, with regards to Earth, the Sun has slightly migrated northwards. If you are coming over here, with regards to the Earth, the Sun has slightly migrated in the 
southward. So migration means what? Which hemisphere is receiving the brunt of sunlight? So on summer solstice, the northern hemisphere will receive the brunt and the Tropic of Cancer will mark that latitude wherein you will have maximum received, wherein the sun's rays will fall perpendicularly. Beyond that, the sun's rays will never fall perpendicularly. Whereas in the winters, whereas in the winter solstice, the Tropic of Capricorn will be that latitude wherein the sun's rays fall perpendicularly and beyond this, the sun's rays will start falling at a slant angle. So, what will the Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn denote? The Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn will denote the maximum extent to which the sun can migrate in the northern hemisphere and the sun can migrate in the southern hemisphere. If I am showcasing you this on the regards to the mapping. Okay, so let's open up the map of Earth. <clears throat> okay so this i'm showcasing the tropic of cancer okay this This being the Tropic of Capricorn, cutting Australia directly in half per se. So, if I'm writing over here, this is so this is zero degree equator. This is twenty three and half degrees north this is 23 and half degrees south okay so what will these two tropics denote these two tropics will denote the maximum northwards and the maximum southward migration of the sun with respect to the earth but mind you this migration is apparent this migration is not actual this is happening why because of the inclined nature of the earth's orbit and the inherent eccentric orbit of earth around the sun okay so the sun will be on tropic of cancer on 21st of june sun will be on tropic of cancer on 21st of june and sun will be on tropic of cancer on 22nd or 23rd of december okay so the sun will be directly shining on this latitude on 21st of june and sun will be directly shining on this latitude on 23rd of december so as the sun is in the northern hemisphere this part of the world will experience summers Okay, and this part of the world will experience winters and on 23rd of December as the sun is over here. So on 22nd or 23rd of December, this part of the world will experience summers. Okay, so the shape of the earth, the actual tilt of the earth, the orbit of earth around the sun and because of the eccentricity the variation in the eccentricity and the variations in the actual tilt you have different seasons on earth so these are the five primary reasons for variations of seasons of earth so in today's lecture i will be highlighting you up till now only tomorrow we'll move with the discussions of arctic circle and the antarctic circle too there is per se no antarctic circle but i will also teach you as to why you have never-ending days on the poles 
90 degree north and 90 degree south and what do you mean by six months of night and six months of days on ports so i hope that you must have gotten the concept of the tropics properly so if i'm summarizing for each and every one of you whatever we did today okay so today i explained you the orbit of earth around the sun so we showcased we discussed the four positions of earth the first two positions were the winter solstice position and the summer solstice position okay the reverse thing summer solstice will happen on 21st of june the winter solstice will happen on 22nd on 23rd of december these two positions will denote what these two positions will denote the northernmost and the southernmost migration of sun with respect to the earth so the global north will be experiencing summers whereas the global south will be experiencing winters when the global south is experiencing summers the global north will be experiencing winters this is all with respect to the orbit of earth around the sun so this is all dynamic this is not static the life on earth is not a static kind of phenomenon it is all dynamic kind of phenomenon okay so we'll be stopping over here today today from tomorrow in the tomorrow's class we'll be focusing on the polar regions and i will also be explaining you the equinoxes okay what are equinoxes and why do we have six months of daylight and six months of darkness on the polar regions i thank you on the behalf of study iq and i hope that these sessions are enlightening to you we are moving at a slow pace but slow but steady always wins the race that's the motto